Okay, so welcome back after uh, deleting and erasing all the blackboards. If you want an extra point in my class, if you are doing badly, no worries. There is a very easy way to get an, a bump in your grade, which is coming here and helping me clean the board because this always takes me a long time. It's a, it's a very frustrating process. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's focus once that we have explained uh, the excitation contraction co coupling and uh, then the neuromuscular junction. Uh, let's talk about the cross bridge cycle, which is uh, the mechanism by which our muscles uh, they are going to contract, uh, so by which uh, the, um, uh, the sliding uh, filament process uh, with the myosin and the actin. Okay, so uh, let's look a bit deeper uh, at the sarcomere and uh, the components of the sarcomere and how it's structured. So in the sarcomere, we have the thin and the thick filaments. So let's start with the thick filaments, which are the myosin. Myosin with the myosin heads, and these are the thick filaments. And then we have also have the thin filaments that have different components. So the thin filaments have the actin, and we also have here the tropomyosin. And very importantly, we also have these globular proteins, which are called troponin. Okay. So the first step here in the crotch bridge cycle, 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 or in the the first step here in the cross bridge cycle or the sliding filament uh, me mechanism is uh, the conformational change in the troponin uh, due to the binding of calcium. So what is going to happen is that the calcium The calcium here is going to bind uh, to uh, the thin filament and it's going to uh, make a conformational change so the troponin can bind here to the head of the myosin. And that is uh, called uh, the cross bridge formation. So by this binding, what is going to happen is that uh, the myosin here, the head of the myosin, is linked to ADP and uh, phosphate. So, and this is uh, what is going to, to go next. So what is going to happen by this binding is that uh, here the ADP and the phosphate, they are going to be liberated uh, from the myosin head. And that's going to produce a power stroke. So this power stroke is going to, this release of energy is going to move the myosin, the head of the myosin towards the end band of the sarcomere. So that's going to allow uh, the contraction uh, and the generation of tension. So in order to explain it with the sarcomere example a bit better so we can all understand. So uh, here, this will be the relaxed sarcomere. So we have the myosin with their heads, and here we also have the actin. So what is going to happen here with the power stroke is that the actin is going to come closer to the M band in the sarcomere, and that's going to generate the contraction. So, 
Everybody's going to go help it now. Is the actin is going to be pushed by the movement of the myosin? towards the center of the sarcobiamir or M band. Okay? So this by this power stroke, the myosin head is going to push the uh, thin filaments towards the center to allow the contraction. And then the last step is the relaxation. So the relaxation happens because here the uh, head of the myosin that was uh, free from the ATP and the phosphate is going to bind to another molecule of ATP. So that's uh, it's going to produce this conformational change again and then the uh, head of the myosin and the troponin are going to be separated again. So this allow for the muscle relaxation and for the sarcomere to go back to its initial conformation in a non-tense way. Okay, so very importantly, uh, this is when rigor mortis happens. So when we die, there is still some, cal some uh, calcium left. Uh, so if we had, uh, if we had uh, our muscles uh, contracted in some part of our bodies, uh, that contraction will, will stay on. But because but we won't have energy because we are dead and we are not um, uh, producing ATP, over muscles, uh, that absence of ATP is going to um, avoid the relaxation of over muscles. So that's why uh, when we die, we have this process uh, called uh, rigor mortis. in which there is no ATP, therefore this relaxation process of the sarcomere cannot happen, so it will be very stiff. Okay, uh, so uh, final, uh, I want to talk a bit about the tension here in the muscle. Uh, so uh, let's uh, have a graph here of the tension. So tension, and we are going to have it in percentage, and here we are going to have uh, the length of the sarcomere. Okay, so the length of the sarcomere and the tension, they are uh, very, they are coupled together. Uh, so here, the um, uh, highest tension in a muscle is only going to be produced in a specific uh, length uh, of the sarcomere. So this process, uh, this contraction process, or the highest tension, is only going to, pr to be produced in a length of the sarcomere that is uh, from 1.6 uh, to 2.6 uh, microns. Okay, so uh, this is because uh, when uh, there is like very little space, uh, so let's uh, draw in, so we have the thick filaments, and then when these thin filaments are here on top of each other, uh, this process is not, is not very efficient at all, and uh, this process of the cross bridge is not going to uh, be possible because there is going to be some interference. Therefore, there is no tension when uh, the uh, distance here is very reduced. But uh, uh, if we have the proper distance is uh, 1.6 uh, to 2.6 uh, microns, and the actin filaments, they are not overlapping over the M band, that's going to be more efficient for creating more tension so we can contract our muscles more efficiently. And then the, finally, uh, a lot of distance is, all, is also not efficient because if we have here the sarcomere and we have a big distance here of the sarcomere, we are going to have very little tension as well. Okay, so we are done today with the skeletal muscle. I uh, hope that you enjoy it, and I see you in the next lecture. Thank you.